Hi everyone! Welcome to Local Chat, episode three. That's French for three. Joining me today uh, is Ian Gibson. I was gonna do a little bit, but I didn't. This song is such a banger, man. I love it so much. It is pretty good. Uh, also joining us, Jake Terrio. That's me. He is one one quarter of Subpixel. Unsung hero of Spotlights on Mondays. Um, that's it. That's I've all been slacking off me. Yeah. Now we can move on. Okay. Uh, that's the show. Though. Thanks for joining us. Um, today we're going to be talking about such hot topics such as Apple first dipping into VR, uh, the second uh, suing of the cyberpunk, and also many other things, including Mario's weight. But before we do that, we have to discuss what I like to call what we've been playing. Ian, do you want to kick that off? Yeah, I'll kick it off. Um, let me start with the slow stuff first. By slow stuff, I mean the quick tidbits. Folks, I've been playing a lot of iRacing. Um, I know I've talked about this before, but I have a 24-hour endurance team race that starts... Actually, it starts in 23 hours from now. Wow. Um, and I've been practicing every single day. Um, this week, I the past week, I've kind of crunched in that I've been doing at least two hours of driving every day on the track in the same car, just getting getting time down, getting the pace down, making sure I'm not crashing, been doing a lot of racing. Um, so yeah, I've been playing a lot of iRacing, and I'm going to be driving about six or seven hours worth of it wow. from Friday to Saturday alone. Is that consecutive or over no, like, it's, spread out? It's not consecutive. It's two, it's two, two and a half hour sprints, and then about an hour long sprint. That's not so uh, bad. It's not terrible, but it's it's like the thing about iRacing is that it's a very good driving sim, which means uh, it's not like driving your car for two hours. It's like driving. Have you guys ever driven fast in your car? Like honest question. You ever driven like very fast, even for just like 30 seconds? In the whole of my life, I've only gone like 20 over. And that's if the speed <laughs> limit is already like 65. Dick, that's not surprising at all. Um, <laughs> I know. So the thing when you're driving fast in your car is you quickly realize it like takes all of it's like it's like full of adrenaline. It takes all of your attention because you're at the edge of the car and you're like, you know what? I don't want to you're any little small mistake can can throw the car out of balance, etc. You know, you're going too fast. You got to slam on the brakes, etc. So basically, this is going to be two and a half hours straight of white knuckle driving where it's like you come out of a corner and you go to 50 percent throttle instead of 40% throttle, all of a sudden you're spinning the car, you know, or um, it's a car, it's a race with 55 other people. I'm sorry, 55 people total on the track. And it's multi-class, which means that there are basically three cars of different performance levels racing on the same track. You're not racing against the slower cars, but it's basically like taking three separate races and holding them simultaneously on the same track. And I'm in the fastest car class, so I am constantly passing slower cars. And it's like, when you get next to a slower car, you're like, hey, buddy, I'm faster than you. Are you, do you see me here? Or are you going to turn into me on accident? <laughs> and it's just two and a half hours of white knuckle driving. And the whole time, you know, your fuel is going from full to empty. So like, it literally starts changing the weight balance of the car. So the car starts turning differently and your tires start going. So it's it's like it's like two and a half hours of driving is nothing if you're just driving a minivan, you know, but white knuckle racing driving with other people at like 200 miles per hour at Daytona is just like <laughs> it's oof. anyways been playing a lot of that for practice um, anecdotally before you keep going, because I've wanted mm -hmm. to ha a chance to mention this and I have not had the opportunity um, Do it. on the note of me not ever going that fast over the speed limit. I was over, uh, like, November, I was taking care of my grandpa because my parents had stuff to do. And uh, we had gone to go pick up some food from a local Japanese place. And the parking lot was one where it has, like, the switchback where you, like, drive one direction in um, every other lane. Yeah. And we got back in the car, and he's like, go that way. And I'm like, that's the wrong way. I'm going to go this way. 
And he's like, you could go that way. I'm like, Grandpa, I'm nothing if not a rule follower, assuming that my 95-year-old grandfather would appreciate this. But no, <laughs> yeah. my 95-year-old World War II veteran grandfather said, well, you'll be the first one into the camps. <laughs> okay. And then we went home and oh, had so Japanese food. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. You know, I, I made fun of you a little bit for not going over the speed limit, but I'm one of those drivers where... Like 95% of the time, I am a safe driver. You know, I don't go that far over the speed limit. Like when I drive crazy in real life, it's very like back roads. There's nobody around. I am completely in control, you know. And it's it's funny because like I do all these racing games. But just last week, I called 911 because there were two people street racing on the road <laughs> outside my condo at 6 p.m. on a weekday literally in the middle of traffic they would come up stop side by side to block all the traffic behind them and then do a countdown and then peel out up to 100 going up and down this road and they were doing it for 25 minutes and i was like these idiots <laughs> two things number one maggie my fiance is coming home at any minute and she's gonna have to drive through those bozos literally going three four times the speed limit and number two Somebody died last year because they got hit by a car going 110 miles per hour when they Jeez. pulled out. They pulled out because they didn't see the car, and all of a sudden, a street racer slammed into them. So I literally called the cops on them. So you know what? Good for you, Jake, for following the rules. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I've never really lived anywhere with back roads, and the only place I've driven on back roads is like rural Kentucky, where it's hills and tight corners, and you uh, cannot speed yeah, through that. Yeah, you got to be pretty ballsy. You'll I do that every now and then. In the Miata, because the Miata sticks to the road really well, mm -hmm. but but most of the time I follow this. Anyways, been playing a lot of iRacing racing racing games still, and um, if you're sick of hearing about iRacing, racing, don't worry. I'll talk about it more next week after the 24 hour race is over. Anyways, um, the other thing I've been playing is I love incremental games, clicker games, idle games, whatever you want to call them, like Cookie Clicker, etc. Do you guys like those types of games? I'm in no. It depends on the one. The best experience I've had with an inter incremental game was uh, Space Plan, which was actually a Devolver digital release um, oh. developed by um, a guy named Jake Hollins, who we uh -huh. in we interviewed for Waveform on a, an early Waveform. So. <gasps> Fancy. Oh, I'll have to check that out, because basically um, I've been trying out some exponential, I'm sorry, some incremental games, because I've been itching for them. And one of them was, I've kind of just gone through a couple of them. Um, one was Exponential Idol, which is kind of weird. It's, um, I only played it for a couple minutes. I quickly realized it wasn't for me, but the interesting thing it does is, so, so Will, you know how most games, like Idol games, they have an aesthetic on top, you know, like Cookie Clicker or like, I forget, I played one for a couple months that was all about eggs. Like you buy a chicken yes, and the chicken gives you eggs. Yes, that's a good one. This one, literally the aesthetic of this is that there's no aesthetic. So you're just looking at an equation and the equation is literally just like, this is how we are calculating how much you are earning per second. And the upgrades are like, you are adding variables to that equation. So it's like, it's like, uh, it's like C equals DT. And it's like C equals the currency you're earning T equals time and D equals your, your earning rate. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to pay 10 bucks to double D. It's like on a 2D, 2D. And it's like, oh, well, I'm going to pay $100 to square D. So now I am exponentially making more. So it's literally just a formula that you are slowly manipulating to make more money. Um, I'm not smart enough for that. I was never really great with formulas. <laughs> math. So I'm looking at this formula, and it's literally just 20 different variables in mathematic notation. And I was just like, I can't, I can't handle it, y'all. Um... Another one I tried was Legends of Eidolon. Will, do you remember what we talked about previously? Um, about the naughty times we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, about how we wanted an MMO that was basically an incremental game. Yes. I found it. <gasps> it's called Legends of Eidolon or I, I, Adelion. I, I can't remember. Adelion! But here, okay, I, I did play this for like an hour and a half, but here's the problem I had with it. Well, I'm sorry, before I get into the problems, let's talk about, it is an idle game. So you, you pick a character, 
and you can mine for materials to craft new items to then fight against monsters to then get XP from them to, to idle up, etc. And when you leave the game, your character's idling. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's like a 2D side idling game. And it, it kind of has like some old school graphics. But anyways, here's the problem I have with it. Imagine playing an MMO on your phone. It's pretty bad, right? All the menus like they it's not zoomed in so you're just like click and the guy moves across and then you click the tree and he just goes whack whack yeah it it had some great mechanics it had a lot of really cool humor in it but i just couldn't handle that it was on the phone mm -hmm. I, I do believe they have a steam version coming soon um the last one i tried was mr mine not a big fan of that one either look i'm just i'm bringing this up because i need you will i mean jake has already given me space plan but I need you, Will, and I need you in the audience. I want your comments down below. I want your chat messages right now. What are your favorite idle slash incremental games? Games like Cookie Clicker, etc. cetera. Um, I want to play them. Uh, Paper Clips. Paper Clips. Paper Clips, Inc. That was a great one. Uh, I, I want more games like that. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to dive in. I just need to find them. A Dark Room. Is that real? Yeah. Very good. Very good. Look that up. I just beat a it. A Dark Room. Uh, I beat it the other day. It's one of the best. Very, very, very good. Um, Got it. It's more. It's kind of like story based and vaguely Lovecraftian, mm. um, and it's very cool. I won't spoil anything else. Uh, I'm trying to think of others because I try to find these for my phone. Yeah. Um. And same. Like, so I found a really good one, or I shouldn't say I think it's a really good one. People kept recommending it to me. It was like uh, Idol Kingdom, I think it's called. And Imagine it's it. good, it list. but on the phone, it it doesn't fit fully on my phone, so it feels like it hasn't been updated in a very long time. And it's just like, it's like made. It's like one of those weird games that's like deliberately made for tablets and tablets. Yeah, only. you ever play Evany online? That game with well, like we've discussed this before. You play bad games and I don't. Oh, oh, it's not. A, I mean, it's not a bad game. It's it's literally <laughs> one of the I think it was one of the first incremental games, and they used to always have those advertisements with like super sexy ladies in them, and oh. you literally like go there and as you build, so like this thing will take three days to finish, and then when you're done, it'll be mm -hmm. like oh this will be done in a month, and then it had like early Michael Michael transactions, micro transactions stuff like Who's that. Michael it, transactions. Jake's back. He's a real asshole. <laughs> it was really. Um, it was weird, but it's it's another one to check out. Evany Online. I, I have no idea where it's at today, but it I'm must still be around. So next week, I'll let you know if any of those are actually any good. Um, I do have a uh, space plan on the list from you, Jake. Any other incremental games or clickers that you recommend for me? I'm on the hunt for a good one. And I haven't found one yet. Not that they're no. all bad. I just I need my next I need my next incremental fix. I know Jay Collins is working on something or has been working on something new since I interviewed him, but Space Plan is kind of my top because uh, just of the sci-fi aesthetic and the the humor. There's a lot of humor to it as well. Um, Take a look. Um, Jake, I'm glad you're back because I think it's time we talk about Monster Hunter. Mm. Um, so <laughs> if you've been a fan of the show, you know that we have... Been playing some Monster Hunter, Will and I, for the past couple the weeks. Uh, <laughs> Why? Is, that's like <laughs> such like self-deprecating humor. Big fan of the show. Um, basically, this weekend I I had a three-day weekend because MLK Junior Day, and I think it was either I think it was Sunday. I was just like, I, I rarely ever do this, but I just sat down and I played Monster Hunter World for like four or five hours straight, and I beat the story. Um, I still really enjoy this game. Will and I had a nice stream on Tuesday playing it together. You know, to kind of kick off this talking, discussion. I'm, I'm going to be back in a second. Yeah, yeah. So just, just to kind of kick off this discussion, I feel like with Monster Hunter, where I'm at is that I was very... It can be very intimidating if you've not played Monster Hunter, right? Yeah. So... You hear it's a giant game. You hear it's got a lot of grinding. You hear it's got a lot of like wonky mechanics that you just have to play 40 hours to get used to. You hear that it takes 100 hours to beat it, etc. 
Um, and you hear that it like doesn't look or even control that good. Like, do you remember the the what was it called? The Circle Pad Pro for the 3DS, yes. where they had an entire second analog stick accessory you could put on the 3DS, and it was made for several games, but really was mostly made for Monster Hunter games, just to be able to control it better. It's very intimidating as a series coming from that background. So with Monster Hunter World, I knew I wasn't going to take it super seriously. I'm very glad they included the armor that basically is like crazy good armor from the start, and it lets you fast track to the Iceborne content. The Guardian but for armor? Me, yeah, the Guardian armor. But for me, it really helped me get used to the game without having to feel punished or having to go fully in depth with a lot of the mechanics you know like playing with will on tuesday he was talking about how there's like you know there's certain traits you know elemental traits etc and you got to build armors against that etc i didn't mm -hmm. have to do any of that with the monsters i still had to fight monsters i still had to take advantage of weak spots and stuff but i didn't have to deal with all the, the any of the elemental i didn't have to grind for any armor sets or anything because because i basically had that crutch armor to keep me through and so i've kind of at this point where i've beaten monster hunter world story and i'm like I have maybe 10, 12 hours into the game and I'm like, I'm not going to play anymore. You know, I feel like this is a great introduction to the series. I've got it. And when Monster Hunter World 2 comes out, I'll dive into that one and I'll play it. I don't want to say for reals, but I'll play it without that, that crutch armor. Um, Jake, maybe you're, you're kind of the Monster Hunter expert on Subpixel. Is that right? I, I would say maybe on Subpixel, but definitely not anywhere else on the internet. <laughs> was World your first Monster Hunter game? World was my first Monster Hunter game. I'd always kind of seen it like off in the wings and been like, oh, that looks interesting. But I know that they like the or ones before this were on like the 3DS and so, like like yeah. handheld systems that I didn't have. Um, I'm also in my Anjaneth t-shirt. If you're not looking mm. at the webcam. Is that what you yeah, man. It just um, looks like a T Rex sneezing. Dude, it's the worst. Yeah, it's got the big nose floop thing. It looks like the dinosaurs but, um, from the hit movie Dinosaur. A... No, they look That's way a... cooler than that. Oh, there was a movie called Dinosaur. I thought you were talking about the TV the show. The monkeys? No, Dinosaur, the, three, the 3D animated film from Disney. There's a dinosaur ride at Disney's Animal Kingdom wow. where I lost a cell phone. Did you get it back well that's your fault for going on the ride so. yeah it was um but no yeah so monster in our world was my first uh we i we had talked about it amongst like my destiny clan a bunch of people were interested in playing it and one guy called it jurassic park for psychopaths um <laughs> i can see it. and um i think i bought it close to launch within like the first week or two um so i did not have the guardian armor i i i you know crafted my sets and and all that jazz um and then i don't think i actually got to the end of the main story until after iceborne came out and i was like why can't i access the iceborne content and i was like oh i haven't finished the story um mm -hmm. so went in and finished the story but uh yeah i heard you talking trash about the long sword um yeah long sword's bad is fine um but i'm a i'm a big fan i started with the the gun lance because it was purely i'm like yeah gun lance no um, yeah, terrible weapon and then i i found myself really enjoying the switch axe and the charge blade um which are both pretty cool yeah. um because they're they're both like two weapons in one and can like yeah. morph in between the two but then so the great I'm, sword I'm... it's a classic and it's real yeah. slow it's uh, so I'm I'm curious. Have you given the Monster Hunter Rise demo a chance? I have not had a chance to play the demo. Um, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. still available or not, but um, I believe it I is. I, I would like to play it. Yeah, I did. I did. A, I downloaded it and I did one hunt the other day on it, and it it's just very hard to go to that after Monster Hunter World because, granted, it is running on the Switch, but it is, it's doing a lot of things that World did, where you kind of have like an open an open area world. but like the the glow bugs are not there it's just a giant floating area. oh like all of the fauna oh. is gone all of the smaller creatures are gone it's just like it's like a ps2 game arena so it's mm. it i mean it's the probably a great. lot closer 
to like the pre like the ones that Probably. were on the three DS and the ones that were I think, on like I think Rise is I think I said this on Tuesday when we were playing. Rise seems like they're taking the lessons they learned from world and applying them to the handheld the handheld games. Yes. And just but, making but I'm not talking about, those. But I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is that it's so graphically limited on the Switch that it looks several generations back. Yeah. Like mechanically it's fine. The hunt was great. It has a lot of those same mechanics. Like I, I do the dual blades in world. So I picked the dual blades in rise and it was like nearly identical. And they've added some cool new mechanics that world doesn't have, but graphically it's just so outdated looking that I was like, if I was coming from the really good. Yeah. World looks really good. If I was coming from the 3ds monster hunter games, I would probably be excited for rise, but world is your first. And then you go to rise. It's like, it's it, you're just you're losing too much in terms of just the look of the game and for world a lot of it is the look um yeah I, so that I, was it's kind of disappointing i don't think they're trying i mean they should be but i i don't think with rise they're trying to cash in on world players i think they're trying to cash in on monster hunter players from before yeah but honestly i you know again very little experience with monster hunter but playing a lot of Monster Hunter World over the last couple of weeks and then playing 30 minutes of Rise, they are very, very similar. Like, there is not a huge amount of difference. So, like, like I understand they're trying to bring it together, but now I'm looking at it where I'm like, one is a fantastic-looking late last-gen game, and the other one feels like it's inbred low res poor <laughs> like like it looks off it looks like you know how they, they they have that uh there's a couple twitter accounts and people who basically take modern games and they run them as low res as possible yeah. it looks almost like that it's like you're playing Big world fans. but it's just very 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 low res um it's just disappointing because i i don't know what to do because it's like yeah is it i think they communicated it, Capcom, it better or are they, did they contract it out to somebody i think it I is Capcom. It's still Capcom. if they like yeah. communicate it better like hey we're making uh, we're making a on the go one again. This is like the old ones, like. But wait, we're gonna make They're, world two. But but at the same time, like like Breath of the Wild looks pretty good, even with the graphical limitations of it. Yeah, I, but I'm saying I don't even think they they care about graphics because the previous ones didn't care about graphics. Yeah, but but what I'm saying is that's a huge problem though because World was all about okay, we're actually gonna care about graphics. We're actually gonna make it look great. Yeah. And now you're gonna go to the Switch and you're basically delivering what feels like a 3DS game in terms of looks. That's too far a step backwards. Um, and, and I think that's kind of my, as petty as that sounds, that's my big problem with it, is it just does not look good. And I don't even think it runs at a solid 30 FPS. Yeah. So, but Ian, anyways, can you pet the dog? I think you can. You can ride the dog as well. You have a dog that's companion. The, that's that's the most important part. Yeah. Mechanically, it seems great, but I just, I don't know how you, you I guess if you skipped world, you could be happy with how Rise looks, but um, anything else on Monster Hunter before we go over to the other big release of the week? Uh, or you know what? Before we do that, maybe we should hit all the other small stuff, and then we can talk about the other big release of the week. What do you think, Will? Yeah, I was just going to say World because it's on my list, too. Uh, I'm almost... I'm, I didn't play any more missions since we played on Tuesday, but I'm still going through it. I'm going to finish it. I'm using... I did not go the Guardian Armor route. I am forging everything and making everything, um, which I find more satisfying because I was saying to Ian on Tuesday, like the Anjanath fight pissed me off three times. And so on the third time, I was like, you know what? I'm going to play this game. I'm going to research him, figure out what I need to equip, what I need to forge, what weapons to bring, what like buffs to put on. And so I did all that rigmarole and then I killed him in like 15 minutes without fainting. Yeah. So like that part is really good. Um, the sameness of everything is really annoying. Like it's always th- like go out on a hunt, track the monster, blah 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 blah. Yeah, um, and how like like seventy five percent of the monsters' move set is the same animation and behavior across all yeah. the monsters. And I wish the collection like there's missions that could easily just be bounties or like like collect three yeah. of these things, but you have to go on an entire separate hunt to do it. I am um, not a fan of how complicated, like the menus are. Oh, it's so Japanese. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's just it's a very lot. JRPG. It's like 
like yeah. menus within menus. Oh yeah, yeah. Cascading. It's menus all the way down. Um, but yeah, that that's my piece on Monster Hunter World. Um, Jake, uh, why don't we go through all the stuff you've been playing? Oh yeah. So I got a micro SD card for my Switch finally. Ooh. So I have 400 gigabytes of extra space. Wow. So I've just Ice. been on a spree because there's been a lot of like games that I've wanted to play in like the the deals section on the eShop. And so I've been snatching up a bunch of those. Um, and so I had a metric butt ton because I wanted to say that and I wrote it down <laughs> uh, of PTO at the end of the year. And so I had a lot of time to sit and play games. Perfect. Uh, the big three, big three of which were Blasphemous, which I played like three or four hours of, and then kind of I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought what I is, would. What is that game? It's a uh, Metroidvania. Okay. Yeah, it's. I think I don't know if maybe I'm not far enough in it, but. <laughs> I'm wishing there was fast travel. Will, I know you played at least a little bit of it. Um, yeah, I played, I want to say, five or six hours. It was free a weekend on Xbox. And I plan on buying it because I did really enjoy it. Um, I really love the like the mood of it. How it's like this like hyper-Catholic self-flagellation yeah, does that, have, does that have a name? It's like Bloodborne y without the horror part of it. I mean, it is very gothic in feel. Um, but yeah, it's just a lot of like, I have sinned. Please forgive me while yeah. I murder these things. Let I'm me like, fill my helmet with yes. blood and then put it on my head. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Um, very good. But I did not like the gameplay as much as I was hoping, so I didn't. I will probably go back to it at some point. But then I played um, Into the Breach, which is um, like a a, yeah, isometric turn-based tactics. And that was great. And I blasted my way through it and like unlocked all the little groups and then did the one where you can build your own group and go yeah. do missions. That was super fun. Uh, and then I played Mini Metro, which is a, a minimalist like subway planning simulator. Um, which is just super chill. You're like, hmm, yeah, get these people around town. Mm -hmm. And it's got a procedural score from Disaster Piece. So, like, as you build the subway lines, the score gets more complicated and more full. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's pretty yeah. neat. Um, yeah. Then still playing Animal Crossing at least an hour a day. Yeah, I saw you on the other day when I was checking in on yeah. my people after three months. Yeah, it's uh, it's just nice. Just nice to hop back into that town. There's no COVID on my island. Go around chatting not up yet. everybody. Not um, yet. Not yet. I keep I keep putting in the in the board. I keep updating the case number, and it's still zero. <laughs> so. Oh, I thought uh, you were actually updating it with like I'm trying to scare your <laughs> US or Florida no. numbers. Like, Julian got COVID today. <laughs> Everybody, don't go to his house. <laughs> Four hundred thousand. Um, Woo! Yeah. No, bad. Oh. Um. Then I got on the eShop for like three bucks. A game called Hey Buddy. A game called The Shrouded Isle, which Sounds similar familiar. similar to Blasphemous is like a. Uh, it's got that same kind of like gothic. We are sinners. We must. <laughs> cleanse ourselves kind of vibe waffle please i'm talking about video games um but it's like a did either of you play reigns it was a mobile game i think also yes. published by devolver it's like that where there's a bunch of like you have to manage the populace's dats so mm -hmm. that they don't like revolt or like they don't go to church enough etc cetera, etc cetera. and after five years you play it in in um seasons so you play like three months at a time um, oh. which is three turns one one turn is each month and after five years the like ancient god is supposed to come back and i've only gotten to the end once because managing cult people is difficult <laughs> that sound difficult yeah but no it's really good i was a big fan of that and then just today i i played like the first hour of octopath traveler 
which I've been wanting to do for months and months now. Is that nice. that thir- the what's it called? Octopath Traveler two, but it's actually the third one, or am I no, thinking it's of Bravely, Bravely Default? Default. It's That's from right. the people who made Bravely Default, I think. Yeah. Yes, um, but Octopath Traveler Two was announced, right? I'm was it? Look it up real quick. Maybe. Oh man, while you're looking that up, I saw a JRPG today from the guy who created uh, Final Fantasy called Fantasia, and they are building physical dioramas for each scene, and then taking a picture of it and then putting it in game with the game characters in it. And uh, pretty cool. they released like a Christmas card um, showing it off. And I was like, is this what they're doing? And then I read the article and it's like, yeah, this is what they're doing. Which I think there was a German game that came out last year, the year before called like True Brook, True Tuber Brook or something like that. That is all stop motion animated. Oh, Looks yeah. I remember cool. seeing something, up there, um, something about that. So quick update. Yes. They confirmed that they are working on a sequel to Octopath Traveler. Nice. That was a while ago. So what's uh, what would you call it if it were sixteen paths? Next, uh, I don't know what the prefix. Would octet. Be. That's octet. No, that doesn't sound right now. Septa. No, septa is. Sept. There oh. is also the Dec- you get Path Traveler. The Decahedron. One of the. That's more sides than 16. <laughs> um, you pick one of the eight travelers to start and then you can collect like the others as you complete that person yep. you picked's campaign. And um, I picked this uh, Huntress character whose name I can't remember because I, I saw that she could tame animals and that was what you used in combat. Um, but I don't know if it's a matter of the localization or what, but some of the no. dialogue is just it's by choice i don't i know exactly what you're talking about where like like i don't know if this is the huntress but i know one of them has like a chav accent so you're you're it's not vo you're reading the text and it's just like oi golf me make it me me oh no yesterday and it's like like they just do an exaggerated jargon inside the text box this one and it's it's, bad it's like when you're six years old and you first learned of Shakespeare for the first time. And so you just mm-hmm. start adding like E and S to the end of all the verbs. God, but that it's is one the worst. Like when you're reading it, that's the worst. Why hast thou abandoned in dest the, the village? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's not even remotely yeah. close to what it should be. And I, it's see, it's a, it's often enough that I know it was a deliberate choice by the localization team, but I actually, I meant to, I like took screenshots and I meant to bring them on so I could read them, but it's real bogus. <laughs> yeah. And I kind yeah. of love it, but I also hate it. Yeah. I saw that as one of the big complaints when the game came out was people were just like the different dialogues they represent in the text box. It's awful to have to read it's that real wonky. Yeah. Jeez. That makes me not want to play. The it. combat is really <laughs> good, and the music and art is also really good. I think so if you can get past the yeah text, I'm I'm this close to my first JRPG. We're getting there. Yeah, okay. You keep saying that, but you already you already picked it out. You already said you're going to play it, and now you're just putting it off. I'm not putting it off. I what I did yeah, yeah. complicated schedule. <laughs> uh, I also I have found sorry. I was just gonna talk Finish. briefly. Finish. The briefest, the briefest of points is that I, I, f- I found myself over the past like year or so realizing that I've been seeking out more and more turn-based games. When as a kid, I was like, no, if it's turn-based, I don't want to play it. I want <laughs> violence immediately. Um, yeah. And now I'm like, am, am I just like I enjoy a slower-paced game as an adult or what? Um, but, so think. I'm I'm workshopping a script around that idea. A, a kid who hates turn-based games? <laughs> no, just that like as a kid, I I always wanted to play like the racing game or the first-person shooter, and now I'm like, yeah. what about a a thoughtful turn-based tactics game? I I remember when my brother told me they ruined Lord of the Rings games when the Third Age came out and it was turn-based. It's like it's stupid. It's turn-based. Don't even get it. I was like, okay, whatever. Lord of the Rings is like the template for. I know, and I've always wanted to play it. Now. <laughs> Why would he say that? I mean, Lord of the Rings were ruined with the movies. You know, <laughs> this is also the brother that I had to beat two towers for him. 
Because <laughs> he couldn't that's do it. That's a good it. game. And that's when I realized I was better at video games than my brother. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I'll quickly go through what I'm playing, and then we can hit up the news. Which, thankfully, it's a light news week, so um, we don't really have to worry about it too much. Uh, we I'm just talk about the inauguration. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, Monster Hunter World, we already went over. I got my PS5 in. Uh, it is the monstrosity Ooh. right behind me. It is. Oh, it I is didn't even notice so it. It's big. It's yeah, so that big. A, that's a honker. Can, can I just say real quick? I don't know if you guys noticed, but there was a giant PS5 drop across multiple retailers today. And we called it last week on this podcast when we covered the news. One of them was a rumor saying that they're going to start dropping a whole lot more. And I feel like we called it. We're we incredible. The news to the people. In the lead so up to Valentine's to Day. Yeah, you should listen yep. to us when we read articles that everyone else sees. <laughs> I felt like that was kind of a hidden. No, that, that was pretty I good. That was, yeah. I didn't yeah. know about it until you posted it. Um, and it was a Ukrainian website, UK. So, mm. that, great job, Ian. Um, so, I've been playing Astros, Astros, Astros Playroom, which is great. Um, it has made me nostalgic for a thing I've never, never, uh, had, which is strange. Uh, there's a German word I think called, you never had a playroom, fern, fern, which means you're homesick for a place you've never lived. Fern Gully. Yeah. Fern Gully. That's the movie. Uh, but anyways, uh, Asher's playroom, really cool. Great showcase of the controller. I was every like time I came to a new thing. I was like, Karen, put your hands on this and like have her play with it. And she was like, oh, yeah, that wow. controller. And I was like, yeah, I, it's I, really I cool. Hear you. Yeah, that controller is yeah. amazing. And Astro's Playroom is by far the best experience with that controller. Yeah. And it's incredible that it's a packet in game. It's oh, cool. Uh, I dipped into, so I my bundle came with Demon's Souls and Miles Morales. Miles Morales included remastered Spider-Man, which I never beat and don't remember. So I dipped into Marvel Spider-Man, swung around a little bit. And I was like, I will replay this game, but not right now. Uh, I'll come back to it and then hit up Miles Morales um, after that. Still playing Red Dead Online, which is fun. I got to do my dailies today after the podcast. Uh, and then I was I I bought the Castlevania collection on the Switch, and I've been playing through Castlevania 1 because I've always wanted to just beat them all uh, and have fun playing them. Uh, I don't know what it is. Castlevania is one of those things like Dwarf Fortress that I just... Really enjoy, and the aesthetic is very cool, and yeah, great games. Well, so, well, what is a man? What is a man but a horse with no legs? Is that, I'm so confused, is that quote from Castlevania? It's, a poor, it's apparently a poor, again, a poor localization of whatever the Japanese dialogue is. Of when uh. Dracula says, what is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. <laughs> It's such a. I like oh, that quote though. It's That's really good. <laughs> but it's Night apparently not accurate. Is a great oh. game, or not as accurate as it could be. There was a good uh, the Bernie Sanders memes. There was a good one of him sitting where Dracula is with Richter. I was very into it. Um, That's been most of my Twitter feed for the past twenty four hours. <laughs> uh, my friend told me that when they interviewed him and said, "What were you thinking when you were dressing up for the inauguration?" He said, what I was thinking is $2,000 for every American. <laughs> and my buddy's just like, always on brand, Bernie. <laughs> always on brand. Apparently the lady who make, made those mittens, her Gmail crashed because so many orders came in. For them. Oh, I can imagine. And I think I that's saw, adorable. When I saw somebody tweet like, hey, this is the person who made those. I'm like, hmm, that email's <laughs> going down. Good luck. Um, okay, so let's dive into the news here. Um, we're gonna skip the last game i know we're running late but we're just gonna... oh oh sorry i i completely i'm sorry i completely blanked. skip it no 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 no. we're not skipping it i sorry it slipped my mind it's getting disguised as another game and we won't notice Ooh. it the the bolded stuff in dark mode do not show up very well um another game ian and i i know ian and i have been playing is hitmon 3 hitman 3 from io interactive Whoo, it's a good one. I'm How a, far are you? I just got to Berlin. I am about 30 minutes past that. I've played about 30 minutes of Berlin. It's um, oh, the beginning of that level. No spoilers. The beginning. I am going to play it. Spoiler yes, I, I, I'll just say, you know, if you played Hitman 1 or 2, 
it's more of the same, but they basically added, they added a camera. So there's certain points in the level where you like scan something and it gives you more intel. So instead of just picking something up or getting little overheard pieces of intel, you can also scan items. Um, they're, they're marked items, so you don't have to worry about finding the items to mark, uh, to scan. Um, they also added shortcuts, which are basically, so imagine you're infiltrating a mansion, for example, and you spend 40 minutes getting to the top level of the mansion, and you find, you could find a ladder, and you could drop that ladder down to the first level, and now every time you play that level, every time you replay it, that ladder is already dropped. So it has cr basically created oh, that's a the... geographical shortcut throughout the level. I hate There's not a whole lot of them. Comparison, but like Dark mm -hmm. Souls? Yes, very similar. Okay. Yes. So they, they've done that thing where, you know, they already had new starting locations. They already had hidden caches, et cetera. But now they actually have like physical ways of more quickly traversing a level on, on other replays. It's neat. Um, it's very, I don't want to say it's very story heavy, but, you know, the first game was story light. The second game, they leaned into the story. The third game, this is the conclusion of the story. So they are very, they're leaning far forward with the story. So just make sure you're a little bit brushed up on it, even though they have a nice reminder yeah. at the beginning. And they kind of, um, they made the first time you play a level, it's kind of been this way, but this time they really forced your hand where it's like the first time you play a level, just follow the story mission because it will, yeah. it will like the first time I did Dubai, I had watched a streamer play it and I was like, oh, this is really different. And I was like, oh, it's because they weren't allowed to play the like story mission. So as long as you follow those the first time, it, it really plays out way more cinematically than a normal Hitman level would. Yeah, yeah. It, se it seems like they, they hold your hand a little bit more introing the level, but the levels, you know, both of us have seen three of the levels so far. They're much bigger and more complicated than before. And, and I would say both in good ways and bad ways, because uh, sometimes it feels a little bit overwhelming. You know, some of the older levels felt nice because they were smaller and it was easier to master those levels. And these ones, even though I only have one playthrough on each, they're pretty big. Like, there's certain parts of the level where you you pop out a different spot and you're like, oh, my, oh, I can go to that building over there? And that's a whole nother attached location? That Berlin level is huge. It's huge. So it's, um, you know, again, between the two of us, we only have probably two, three hours into the game so yeah. far. But it's definitely great. If you've not played Hitman 1 or 2, what is your problem? They are incredible. You need to play them. <laughs> if you don't like stealth games, I don't care. I don't like stealth games. They're incredible. Play them. They are just, you got to play them. And you can skip right ahead to three if you want to. But honestly, you should really just go back and do one, two. You know, I was trying to follow the purchase up. Is there an easy way to just buy, like, give me all the Hitman games? Oh, oh, welcome to three? Will's personal hell. So I think the answer is no. When right? Hitman 3 launched, there's a website where you can carry over your, progr carry over your progression from Hitman 2, which is something I very much wanted to do because I yes. have a lot of levels of mastery. Caveat, though. It has to be on the same console family. Yes, it has to be on the same console family. Yes. Um, no so processor. I've always played on Xbox. Yeah. Um, so the website was not working. And people were understandably angry because if you started Hitman 3 and then imported your stuff, it would delete your Hitman 3 stuff. Which seems weird, but I'm sure there's a reason. There's plenty of people being like, this is easy. You could easily do this, which I hate when people say that because you have no idea what's going on. Like, well, look, look, I just want to say it's not that difficult to do that. They just implemented it wrong. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> right, but you don't know that. It yeah. could have been the person who worked on Hitman 1 could have written it in a horrible way or something. But anyways, so that all worked, and then... You don't know. You weren't. You don't work no, look, there. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, it's not like it's an impossible problem to solve. It's just that they implemented it in such a way that they have created this. They they are the creators of this restriction. Yeah. That's no, that's mean. fine. But people who think it's like, oh, just flip the button, it might not be that way. There's no, plenty of reasons no. why it now, couldn't work. Yeah. Now they can't flip the button because they designed it wrong. Yeah. But just to be clear, I'm just saying it's their fault. Period. You know. Don't don't be like, well, coding is hard. It's like, no, they coded it wrong. They're not gonna yeah. be able to fix it quickly. But it's not unless uh, they were the people who were doing it were thinking of it this way. Anyways. Um yeah. so currently all of my Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 masteries are into Hitman 3, but Hitman 3 does not understand that I own Hitman 1. Because in order oh. to do that, you had to import Hitman 1 into 2, which I have done. And then when you import 2 into 3, it realizes I own 2, and then 
when you're you're supposed to so there's these access passes they add now which is very simple it's simplified the thing for newcomers so if you bought if you buy hitman 3 and you've never played hitman all you have to do is go buy the hitman 2 and 1 access pass and you've have you have all three games but for in, me in a single piece of software yeah within and it's all hit, inside hitman 3 and hitman 3 is smaller than all of hitman 2 and it has every single level in it um yeah. so you're supposed to go to Hitman 1, and then it brings you to the Microsoft Store, whatever store you want to go to, and it should be free. But for me, it's still $30. So supposedly they're working on it. I haven't tested it today. So at some point, I'm not itching to play Hitman 1. So at some point, I will have access to the levels again. Um, my only other complaint, which you touched on, I, I the Dartmoor level, which is incredible, I was missing a bunch of like uh, intelligence in certain areas. And I came to realize, oh, it's because I have to use the camera to scan for it. But there's no... What's the indication that you can scan something? On the map. It's, on the it's, map. it's a little wonky, but, but on the map, there's an icon. Okay. And then that... you go there and you take out the camera and you have to move it a little bit and then it's okay. scanned. Because I was losing my mind. I was like clicking the, the Hitman vision and nothing was showing up. And so finally, yeah. I like was able to scan everything. But okay, it's on the map. That makes a lot more sense. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, that makes a lot, lot more sense now. Um, anyways, really enjoying Hitman Three. Um, yeah, yeah. I I'm just going to consider this a call to action, a PSA. If you have not played any of the Hitman One, Two, and Three series, you need to play them. They are incredible game design, level design like in terms of tone which is like serious but with lots of touches of humor they're just incredible games and you should play them whether it's one two or three you can hop in anywhere you're gonna enjoy it i guarantee it you're gonna like the way you look uh okay that's it that's all she wrote level in a men's warehouse <laughs> yeah awesome <laughs> uh moving on to uh what i like to call man i get so lazy not lazy, I just forget to change the uh, thumbnail. Uh, the news, moving on to the news. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit differently today because there's so little. Uh, Ian, is there anything you want to talk about in the news section? Specifically. Yeah, do we, do we not have the news theme? Oh, we do have the news theme. I was going to ask. I sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I was, you know, that's the way things happen. Here we go. And the news today, there have been 17 dead mammals on my bridge. That's the news theme. I think I gotta boost it, because in, in FUBAR it's real quiet. Anyways, Anyways just, um, like, news just like Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> the, uh, the topic I want to talk about is a little article from Bloomberg... She has a whole bunch of insider info on Apple's first VR headset. Did you guys happen to to read and or scan this article? No, uh, I'm I assuming it's it. like five thousand dollars and has wheels that you can add on for another. You know thousand. what? You're actually very close. So basically, this is um, it's just a whole bunch of insider info about this headset, and there's a lot of crazy little tidbits in here, but basically Apple's been working on a VR headset with some AR capabilities along with it. They want it to be a super high end and they didn't put a price tag on it, but they likened it to the $6,000 Mac pro desktop computer, just like a high end consumer. They also talked about how they, they also talked about how this doesn't sound like a sales plan. This just sounds like a sales estimate if I'm reading it right, but quote, some Apple insiders believe the company may sell only one headset per day per retail store, which is would be just over 180,000 units over the year. Um, so they're not expecting this to be to sell like crazy. Um, Weird. I'm gonna. But say... the reason why the 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 reason why the cost is going up is they say it's going to have uh, very high res displays, higher than current displays in uh, VR headsets, as well as a uh, chip. They already have a chip in it that is equal to the M1 Mac processor, which just came out, which is very fast. Uh, I'm sorry, Jake, did you have something? No, I was just going to say that they've definitely got ahead of themselves, and they should have saved the term retina display for their headset. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, some other tidbits. They, they... 
there's a couple different dates thrown out in this article. Possibly as soon as 2022. Now they're targeting 2023. It may even be later than that by the time it comes out. They're struggling to get the headset weight down. They have a fan on the headset to cool it because of how hot the processor is running. It's an all-in-one integrated headset like the Quest. They've moved away from tethering to a PC uh, like the Rift S does and the Rift 1. They also tried for a little bit to have wireless beaming, as in you would have a you would have a base station that is doing all the processing power and would wirelessly beam the video and input content to the headset. They got rid of that. They wanted to be all in one like the Quest 2. Uh, the exterior is apparently right now it's cloth because they're trying to get the weight down, which makes sense for a VR headset. So that they talk about how the HomePod speaker has like a cloth exterior. It's like plastic and cloth, I believe. Um, so just a lot of interesting tidbits in here. I, I don't know. What do you guys take on on Apple entering the VR space? What do you guys think? I'm. I mean, I guess just knowing about other Apple hardware, I'd assume that this would not be a headset that you'd be playing games that you'd play on a Mac. It would be a headset that you would use with your Xbox or your PC or your playstation right because there's like no no it's it would be standalone it would be like the quest 2 as in you put it on and everything runs on the headset so but it's not you... a display it's a what are you it's play? a separate who's developing for it what do you I mean there's plenty on? of there's plenty of ios games you could get you could get any of those ios developers to make a vr game yeah i guess but i'm i'm th like the stuff that's been on apple arcade so far i'm not imagining like there's not been any games but, that i'm like i want to play that in vr i mean they could get people to make stuff for it the same way facebook got people to make stuff for the oculus yeah yes they, they also says they're also targeting watching video and communicating with it as well kind of like facebook is doing with the 3d avatar space i'm not paying six thousand dollars to be on a zoom call <laughs> yeah well so here's here's the thing i i'm actually very optimistic about this and it's going to take me a little bit to get to this explanation. But basically, <laughs> people who buy Apple products are largely snobs who don't care about how much money they spend. It's just about the product and the label. Um, when you look at things like Beats, which is an Apple company, you're spending $300 for a headphone that is basically $50 worth of quality sound. Uh, even what I would argue is one of their most successful products, the AirPods, is still $200 when you can find decent wireless earbuds for like 70 bucks. Um, you've got people buying, you know, like the Mac Pro desktop computer is $6,000. Granted, it's a workhorse, but it also comes with, what is it? Isn't it like a $4,000 monitor with a $100 optional stand? I think the um, stand was more than 1000 but the monitor may have been less than 4000 Yeah, that's... But the wheels were 999 <laughs> I remember. Yes. <laughs> so, and people are paying it because all they care about is the brand. And so then I think about VR, and I think the big problem that VR has that they're solving with the Quest 2 in particular is that people just aren't adopting it because it has a high cost of entry and it's seen as like a geeky, nerdy thing. So, you know, uh, the Beats, oh no, sorry, not the Beats. What are they called? The AirPods Max or the Air Max, the, the wireless headphones that oh, Apple just no came clue. out with? Yeah. I can't like six, what they're called. It's something they're like $600, the price right? Stupid. Yeah. yeah. They're six hundred dollars. Literally, as soon as they were announced, people were buying them. These horribly overpriced, and they're buying them just because they're Apple. But here's the thing: I don't care if you do that. But if Apple can come out and basically use that brand like awareness to get like a million people to buy a six thousand dollar VR headset day one, I'm happy about that because that means all of a sudden all these VR game developers are going holy crap, we just got a million new potential customers. Mm. We can actually work on this game. We can actually start making VR games because they're no longer niche. We have basically tripled the, Apple has tripled the, the user base overnight. So, so that's why I'm kind of optimistic about this is if Apple does it right and they release a product that is at, I don't know, I, I think they just, you can't price it too much and you got to market it right. And I think Apple can do both those things. All of a sudden, you're going to get a lot of people buying VR headsets who didn't give two hoots about VR before. 
just because it's an Apple product, just because it's the brand new Apple 12 Max Pro LVR headset, iPhone thingy, they're going to buy it. They're going to buy it immediately. They're going to line up to buy it. And because of that, the PC VR space, the standalone Quest 2 VR space is going to be better for it. And that's why I'm excited. Okay, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Yeah, I can yeah. I can understand that now. I will not buy it. But I will not buy yeah. it. I don't no. like Apple products. I also so. think like having another uh, another thing in that space again helps breed uh, com- like competition and like innovation and stuff like that. So like even things people learn from doing the Apple stuff might carry over to other people. Uh, like like Apple could make the perfect thing and make it $6,000 and then uh, Oculus goes, oh, they added this one thing. I think we can do that for cheaper and put it on our thing. And then, Mm -hmm. then it just makes better products for everyone. So John Carmack will go work for Apple, (gasps) but he can't take his code with him. Or else he'll get, yeah, dude, that's a good, that's a good point though. Cause when you look at like, when you look at digital music, when you look at the smartphone, um, all of those were kind of pushed by Apple innovation. You know, they were first to the market or first to the market in a major way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now 10, 15 years later, you can buy a smartphone for 50 bucks off the shelf at Walmart. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. so that's kind of what I'm hoping is that Apple can come in as a heavy hitter, bigger than Facebook, bigger than Steam. And have that customer base that is rabid and expand the VR market, even if they offer something that's crazy overpriced and isn't that great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, like you said, they so, did it with. You know, go ahead, Jake. No, I was gonna. I have a longer thought. If you have a short thought, well, I was just gonna say, yeah, they they did it with iPhone, they did it with smartphones, they did it with, uh, mus- digital music, they did it with uh, streaming boxes, yeah, like with AirPods know. as well, yeah, AirPods. Yeah. So I was gonna ask, um, tangentially, just looking at, you bring up this this Apple maybe making a VR headset. Do you think that that will snowball into? like an Apple games division where they might commit more fully. Like they, when they launched Apple TV or Apple TV plus or whatever, they got Spielberg and M night Shyamalan and JJ Abrams and a bunch of people to try to, you know, convince people to flock to their product. I would be interested to see uh, when I jokingly said that they were going to get John Carmack from Oculus, um, like Oculus got John Carmack from id. Do you think that's an avenue Apple might try to go down? So where they're like, well, we've got this set of hardware. Let's, you know, broaden the Apple Arcade into a more holistic games space and build our own gaming hardware and get I, a bunch of people like from yeah. soft exclusive to make a game for the Apple. So I, I don't think they're going to build more hardware. I think... You know, they're not going to have an Apple console. I also don't think they're going to have an in-house studio because you can look at a- Amazon through a whole bunch of money. They you know, did. I know people who got offers from Amazon or went to work for Amazon Game Studios because of the amount of money they were throwing around. And l- literally nothing good has come of it. You know, it's just been a money pit. Mm-hmm. So I think Apple's smart enough to not fall down that. I think they're going to do the same thing they did with Apple Arcade, kind of like what you were talking about, is they basically go out to developers and they say, we want you to make a game. It's this much money. If you make a game for Apple Arcade, it's double that if it's an exclusive for Apple Arcade. And they can get a whole bunch of developers to do that. You know, the same as Oculus reached out to EA for a Star Wars, Darth Vader, Infinity, whatever that mm-hmm. stupid Star Wars exclusive game is, you know? Yeah. I think that's going to be their avenue is basically throwing money at existing developers rather than building their own studios right. or, or rather than building their own console ecosystem. Um, but that is an interesting question, you know, because the, the VR ecosystem right now is basically, it's basically Steam where you have a whole bunch of random apps running through Steam. Oculus is building, like they have their own storefront and everything because the mm-hmm. idea is when you put the Quest on, you see the Oculus storefront. That's how you navigate your library. I don't know what Apple's going to do. You know, are they, are they going to, they're probably going to build their own VR arcade version, but then they got to build a whole storefront for that. Mm -hmm. They can't lean on their existing arcade because none of those games are going to play in VR. Well, you could get them to play in VR, but they'd be crappy. Yeah. You know, they would just be 2d in VR. So they're going to have to build their own 
VR catalog out of that. Whereas, you know, Oculus, they've been doing that for years. Steam, it's very easy. You just have a game. You just, you they included a VR interface for your existing library. So Apple's going to have to build that out. But that could be a problem because if you don't build it out right, you buy your $6,000 headset, you put it on, and you see a mediocre interface with 10 games on it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? You so I'll say that. Before, before we move away from Apple Arcade, I would like to mention that uh, Nuts, the squirrel surveillance game from Yoon, who we met in Iceland, is coming mm -hmm. out on Apple Arcade in like a week Ooh. or something. Oh, that sounds cool. Nope. Yeah. I'm nuts for it. Um, yeah, so that was that was kind of my pick. Uh, I felt like that was, like you said, it's been a slow news week, but that was something that really stuck out to me was basically somebody coming out with a whole bunch of insider information saying, look, here's where Apple's at with their VR headset. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, Jake, I don't know if you had any chance to look over the news stuff. Is there anything here that you, anything that speaks to you, or I, I can just uh, run through a couple things? I did have a chance to look over the list, and I went, wow. I don't really know anything about any of this. So I'll talk about it if somebody asks me. But, uh, um, really? I, I mean, I'm not, it's just because I'm not really qualified to... Oh, yeah. no, it's, None it's, of us it's, are qualified. I'm tangentially um... interested in the Resident Evil showcase, but I didn't watch it. Yes, so uh, I'm just going to run through the rest of the stuff quick. You know, there's nothing else that you want to go in depth on, is there? No, I, I was just going to say, like, a little peek behind the scenes is basically we have a note stock running for the week, and then as news stories come up, we add it to it. And I feel like until this morning, there were basically two tiny news stories on here. <laughs> it, is, it was Cyberpunk and Apex yeah. Legends. You, like, it feels like every podcast says this about 20 times a year where it's been a slow news week. But this is the first time that I've been like, it really was a slow news mm -hmm. week. There's just not I feel a like a big on. event in the history of America kind of took over. <laughs> yeah, Resident Evil 8, man. Resident Evil yeah. 8. Uh, let me just go through this list quick. Uh, Jason Schreier did a great... Uh, Article about Cyberpunk 2077 talked to some insiders. All sorts of stuff on what caused the video game's disastrous rollout. A lot of good info in there. Um, highly recommend it. Good read. Good writer. Um, there was a rumor that Apex Legends is coming to the Switch. Uh, there was a tweet uh, in China that had it labeled there. <clears throat> it has since been removed from the like official thing it was on. So oh, That's just communism at, at work man yeah, communism at work uh it's just a rumor for now um real quick can i just say something i i'm gonna look this up but i'm gonna say it anyways is this about apex or about communism this is about apex guess what engine that game runs on uh is it not unreal no is it not um what what did what did what was titanfall on believe maybe the same engine it's not frostbite is it well i was gonna say if it's not unreal because that's what uh yeah. fallen order same, was on it, same it engine be, as titanfall it would be what titanfall was on which yeah like i would say i would have said like frostbite or cry engine it's the source engine what oh, 2004 <laughs> yes it is no they heavily modified yes it is they heavily modified the source engine to get like that player count up and oh. the map size and everything. So oh. when you say it's running on Switch, I go, yeah, I could see that. I could totally see <laughs> that on so Switch. That's so good. I, I would have had no idea. Yeah, I thought you were going to say Apex Legends is a bad game, which I would agree with you. Oh, excuse me, Will? That's a good game, man. We beat that game. Yeah, I just say, I'm not, if it does come to Switch, I'm not going to get it there. Yeah. I mean, Especially if there's crossplay. I feel like I would be at a severe disadvantage. Yeah, that's true anybody playing yeah. on literally any other console um PC. uh this is a quick one peter moore former xbox executive and ea it's coming back to video games uh he is joining uh unity he's gonna oversee the sports and live entertainment and working under his old boss from ea uh, which is just interesting peter moore of tattoo halo release date on arm fame uh oh, yes. yeah not a real tattoo he's unfortunately uh, uh, ah, yeah, you just told me that Santa wasn't real, Will. <laughs> yeah, he's also the game executive who, if you remember, in 2017, left the games industry to be the CEO of Liverpool Football Club in the UK. Yeah. <laughs> it, I actually read a nice article where it's basically him talking about how before he got into the games industry, he was a soccer coach and soccer trainer and then sold soccer stuff. And it was like him going back to his old 
his old routine. I was like, oh, that's nice. And now three years later, he's just like, nope, I'm going back to games. So it's, I think his quote was like, when you do games 24 seven and stop for a bit, you kind of just want to go back to it. (laughs) I need to redownload Unity because they've got that, um, they did that partnership with Lego where there's like a Lego plugin to make like micro games with a bunch of Lego assets. That's hey, cool. I, I want to do that. Um, uh, Harkronium of the Subpixel community, he's been building some Lego Universe stuff in mm-hmm. Blender. That so video is that. getting close to 10,000, I think. Yeah, go oh, watch wow. that. It's a great video that Jake did. Um, next up, uh, Ta- Takaya Imamura. Takaya Imamura. I'm bad at Japanese names. Sounds right. Uh, is uh, leaving Nintendo after 32 years creator of tingle and uh he did a bunch of tingle was in the thumbnail (laughs) he did a bunch of character designs uh, across f-zero and star fox uh he made my favorite character captain falcon and fox mcleod he also designed the the majora's mask which is very cool did you see this tidbit according to the ign article uh they say quote according to zelda series producer E.G. Anuma, Inamura came up with the word Majora by combining his own name with Jumanji. <laughs> that's that's, good. that's ballsy, and that it pulled off. It's like, what if we, uh, it'd be like if I was like, this new game we're making, what if we called it uh, Gibsonium? Huh? <laughs> huh? Sold. Million Sold. Million dollars. <laughs> Um, um, so, uh, he said, this is my last day going to work. I took a selfie with the empty office. I guess it won't be coming. So, I won't yeah, be coming in imagine. anymore. As you'd expect, I'll miss it, which yeah. is adorable. Yeah. Cute, cute man. That's depressing. Cause then you can't really have a retirement party. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, f- not finally, uh, I'm going to do this little tidbit, but let's see if this actually shows up. Oh, it did show up and hit play on this. Um, this, uh, B-roll footage of from 1990. I watched the entire thing. Uh, it is playing on stream right now if you want to watch it. Hopefully, we don't get taken down for it. Uh, it shows NES consoles being made. It's B-roll of Inside Nintendo of America in is it Redmond, Washington? Yes. Uh, right. Showing people building NES by NESs by hand. There's uh, one snippet talking to the designer of a hands-free NES controller that you could only get by contacting Nintendo support for people who are paralyzed or handicapped, anything like that. And I actually watched a couple of videos of it in use and it's pretty dope. Hmm. Um, and also I had no idea such a thing existed. Yeah, me neither. And uh, showing a bunch of Q and a Q and a stuff and uh, or sorry, Q and a Q a stuff testers and everything. Yeah. And like asking if they like took the quiz on final fantasy and like Zelda and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's incredible. There were, there, were, there were three highlights for me. Number one was the first like four or five minutes of the of it is like it's the uh, it's the reporter like doing the talk to yeah. camera bit. But he just keeps making mistakes. So they have to like it's like outtakes. It's, it's great. Like it was purposely edited like that. It's so well done. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, the second one was the when they're talking to the guy who designed the controller, you can see like you can see like 1980s CAD behind him on a CRT and it's so good looking. I love it. It's just like that, like that black background colored lines aesthetic. Oh, I love it. It's so good. And then the third one was the poor, poor QA department. They have like, it's just like an open room and they just have clusters of like CRT TVs next to each other. And then just a bunch of folding chairs right next to each other in front of them. And it's just all these QA testers packed in like sardines next to each other on folding chairs, playing these games. And it was like, Oh, you poor, poor testers. I feel for you. You don't even get a real chair or a desk. You just get folding chair in front of a TV. The best was half the, half the testers were already using the NES advantage. Cause clearly yeah. they're like, they don't want to hold a controller. Are they, they just rest their hands on the desk. Yeah. Like, and the lady like, can you can you play a level of Tetris and then play level nine of Tetris? Like, I want to I want to show it going faster. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's um, good stuff. It's just like real good. Like not just for Nintendo stuff, but it's just a real good like video from the eighties. Yeah, know? it's yeah. It was it. I the other the guy had also uploaded like a Toys R Us from ninety two. 
So I was watching through that, which at one point it just gets really creepy when he's filming just a woman. So I'm like, can we stop this now? <laughs> but it was clearly for like one of those like uh, like a lady quizzically looking at something for the news, but she like mm. notices him and it's like really weird. Um, <laughs> camera starts shaking. Yeah. If, you're, if you're rolling camera on somebody, the producer's got to go over there and get her to sign something. It was the 90s. Oh, you gonna Nobody cared face. about anything. It was the um, 90s. Yeah, dream of the 90s. Pre-9-11. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. Uh, i definitely check it out. Uh, it's really relaxing. Uh, and then finally, uh, we'll just touch on the Resident Evil showcase that happened today. Um, they announced uh, Resident Evil Village. They showed a new trailer. Then they showed some gameplay. Boy, does it look like Resident Evil 7, and I'm very excited. Uh, it it kind of looks like a mix of Resident Evil 7 and 4. Uh, so it's first person, uh, and it's like werewolfy and gothic and creepy castle, and it's everything I want. You're playing as Ethan again. I don't know what happened at the end of seven, but I'm gonna find out because I'm gonna play it before this game comes out. Was that announced in at E3 2019, or in one of the live streams from 2020? Because I I remember oh the tr the reveal trailer for that being yeah. one of my favorites i thought it was 2019 like, last year but the guy in the video said june so i wasn't sure if i was just adding an extra mm. year because it's been so long i don't know um, i i just I, I i will remember watching it and being like kind of looks like uh, resident evil but it doesn't really and then village came up and then they did that great thing that yeah, whatever yeah, graphic yeah. designer makes the title treatments for resident evil where then it flashes the Roman numerals in the word, and yeah. you're like, ah, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was announced really at that. the PlayStation 5 reveal event in June 2020. Was June 2020. Okay, so wow. it was part of that thing where people were like, are the speakers CGI? That one? Oh, yes. that one, yes. So, yeah. So May 7th, 2021, it comes out. Um, so yeah, I have to start playing Resident Evil 7. In order to get ready uh, for, we think that Eight Village. Everything seems like it's been delayed or getting delayed. Do you think that it's actually going to come out in May? I think so. Yeah, I don't I think mean, they would have been... announced it this close. How long has it been since Seven came out? Three, three years? A seven while. Was 2017. It was for me two apartments and one no. house ago. 2016. Yeah. yeah, let me look it up real quick. Um, they also so that's coming out. Uh, there's a 2017. There's an exclusive demo for the PlayStation 5 right now that features ray tracing. Uh, and apparently there's no combat. You can just wander around the castle. Uh, so I don't know if that's just going to be spooky or not, mm. but I'm going to play that this weekend. Uh, it should be fun. Awesome. Spooky yeah. The other thing about the demo I saw was that it is not part of the game. They'll reference it in the game, but it is basically, it's kind of like Ground Zeroes. It is a separate experience that ties into the main game in certain yes, ways. Yes, it's called The well, Maiden. Well, wasn't... I, I don't know. It's been a while since I played 7 and a while since I played the demo for 7, but wasn't the demo kind of like that, where it was in that same space that you played characters that you then didn't end up playing in I don't. The I thought the demo game? was... I thought the demo was the opening of 7. Yes, I think it you was that VHS right. opening. Because I know there's a it's couple the first house. It's the first the, little house. The VHS tapes in, yes. yeah. But... Yeah, it's seven. Yeah. I, I'm excited for this game. I will not be playing it. It is terrifying, but it looks like it's just as good as seven. And I was forced to play the first hour of seven. Terrified. It was a great game. <laughs> Terrified. So I am excited for anybody who wants to play this game. It looks like you will enjoy it. <laughs> I will not. I, seven, I've played half of seven before. Terrifying. I don't understand how Dan Reichert played it in VR. I would scream. Scream. I, you know, Terrified. like, I'm not, I'm not like a huge VR person where I'm like, VR makes everything better. But having played Phasmophobia in VR, mm -hmm. in case you missed that stream, I just basically shut down. I could not move. <laughs> that game is terrifying in VR. So, um, yeah. So looking forward to that. Uh, Karen's very much looking forward to watching me play 7. Um, I might, yeah, I might try to stream that or something when I'm a little bit into it. Uh, and then they also announced, why did this article not have the other stuff? They announced there was that uh, multiplayer game they were working on for Resident Evil. Um, Wait, we and, that out? 
Yeah, I thought that came out with RE3. Like, no, this uh, is this is the different one. They made another multiplayer. This is the multiplayer deathmatch game called Reverse. Oh, oh no, not the one yeah. where it's like Dead by Daylight, where somebody's off in a room dropping. Yeah, traps that that came out with three. Uh, yeah, I was gonna yes. say I thought that already. Came like, out. Uh, yeah, not to be not to be confused with the Rainbow Six one that came out before then, which was also terrible. Yes, it's uh, yeah, it's that kind of game. So this one is uh, AI controlled monsters, stuff like that. Uh, I'm vaguely paid attention. When does the multiplayer Outlast game come out? Is there a multiplayer Outlast game coming? That got announced. I want to say maybe a year ago or more than that. Is it literally called Outlast? No, the key art was like a beam of light shining down, like the the, the green night vision type thing, and it was oh, dudes yeah, yeah. in like like VR headsets that had been like screwed into their skulls, like reaching up towards the yeah. light. Ugh. It just says twenty twenty one. When's the horny Geiger game coming out? Scorn. Scorn. <laughs> Not soon like, enough. Are you talking about Scorn? <laughs> um, I don't know. When does the medium come out? That's this week, right? Medium comes out next week, I believe. I think I'm gonna. I might try to stream that. Uh, I'm looking forward to scary, scary game. Oh, the new um, Dan Mullins game comes out this year too. Maybe. Ooh. Inscription. Um. So yeah, that that's it as far as news. Um. Yeah, slow, slow news week, as they say. Um, you guys got anything else you want to add? Anything you want to want to pitch? Yeah, um, I'm just going to say it again. Folks, I need your incremental idol games. Send them my way. I feel like it is a drug that every now and then I binge on. And daddy's hungry. Tweet so at Think Gibson. Tweet, tweet at Think Gibson. Comment on this video. Come knock on my door and tell me in person. I want them. Do it. Give them a shot. Um, Jake, if people want to shout things at you, where can they do that? At underscore Jake Terrio or at www.jaketerrio.com which will give you my personal email address in the contact. Nice. Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find all of our stuff. Subpixelfilms.com opening straight here to our YouTube channel, which you're currently watching us on. Until then, until dawn, I have been Will Crosby. That has been Ian Gibson. That has been Jake Terrio. We are Subpixel. Bump it up, bump, 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 bump. And we'll be back on Saturday. I'm not sure what I'm playing yet. I might play this Resident Evil demo, or I might play Hitman 3, or I might just stream myself ripping my flesh off. That would be fun. It'd be a good time, honestly. Um, I was going to let the sun play out, but I think I'm just going just gonna to end it here, folks. So have a wonderful night and dream of sugar plums and berries. Bye.